Well, I can also imagine that because everything is modular, it doesn't necessarily have to be the form factor of a laptop either. That's right. Someone wanted to, you know, 3D print and design their own housing and make that a set-top box or some type Absolutely. of other video game, you know, main box or something. They could do that. Yeah, and yeah, we're like I'm especially excited to see the cyberdeck builds that people put together with the uh, with the main boards coming out of these. Framework has specifically designed the motherboard to be able to run outside of the laptop enclosure, and they've even gone as far as to provide CAD drawings. So if you wanted to design your own case for it, you could use this like the kind of central processing area as a separate computer. Like you can plug it up to power and you can run. We sure about that? Anyone test that or did we just take their word for it? Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and I know I said I was working on some more Linux distro testing on my framework laptop. However, with all the tinkering, it looks like I borked the trackpad cable. So my keyboard and trackpad aren't 100% working. I've reached out to framework customer service and they're sending me a new cable. If that doesn't work, they're gonna send me a whole new input cover. I'll follow up on that whole process in my community posts and on Twitter, so be sure to get subbed and my Twitter handle is in the description below. But today, since I'm needing to use an external keyboard and mouse to work on the laptop anyway, I figured I'd finally test the motherboard outside of the laptop and talk about some possible uses for it after it served its purpose and you've upgraded your framework laptop with a new motherboard that's better, stronger, faster. The ability to easily remove the old motherboard and have it fully functional outside the chassis without the need to modify it, you know, bypass intrusion detection circuits or connection points is the final reason I needed to pull the trigger on the very first product from a brand new company. And I had no doubts that it would work. I'd been following framework in the development of this laptop since the first articles were published like way back in February. And the day before the launch of batch one pre-sales, I watched Norm from Adam Savage's Tested sit down with the CEO of framework, Narav Patel, and he talked about how he was excited to see the cyber decks people would build with the framework main boards. And that same day, May 13th, he and another framework engineer confirmed that the main board does work without the display or battery, but it's best to use a 100 watt power supply. Awesome, the next morning, I pre-ordered my framework. But then, just last week, five months later, at NRP follows up with this. Note, we are currently working on a firmware update to enable the main board to work without the battery plugged in. Wait, what? So now you're saying it doesn't work five months later. So I'm confused and potentially very disappointed. I guess the only thing to do is pull the main board and test it. And just FYI, I have installed the beta firmware on this, but that firmware update predates this post. So I don't know. Okay, so I have the main board completely out of the system and I just attached some standoffs to keep it up and stable. It's on my grounded anti-static surface and I have a couple of the modules so I can have an HDMI output to an external display and the USB-A for the wireless mouse dongle. And finally, I do have a 100 watt power supply. So let's plug this thing and turn it on. Now there is a surface mounted power button on the board. It's hard to see, but it is up here and it's labeled SW1. So here we go. Well, nothing happened. Try that again. Now, 
I'm getting nothing. Now, I know these red lights flashing is just letting me know that there is power coming to the board and the red light means the intrusion detection switch, which is right up here, is disengaged. So if I engage it, you see they turn white. However, I've already set in the BIOS to ignore intrusion detection. But I know with the fact if I take the input cover off with everything still connected, laptop will boot up and work even if those red lights are flashing. But right now, I am not getting anything. Let's see if I'm getting any power or how much power I'm getting to the board itself. No, oh, it's in a loop. See, it's grabbing power and then shutting it down. Yep. It's not in fact getting steady power to the board. It's, it's grabbing the power, realizing something is not right with the board and then shutting it down. And it's just in a continual loop. Yeah, and you can see when it shuts down, that little red light stops flashing. Let's see if this intrusion detection does have anything to do with it. Good, nope, same thing, just shuts right back down. Okay, so obviously the board does not work completely out of the enclosure. Let me just put it back in the chassis, see how much can be disconnected with it still functioning. Okay, now what I've done, I've just screwed it back into the case, nothing is connected, everything's still disconnected. I just wanna make sure that it wasn't like a ground fault error. So let's go ahead and try this again. Plug it in, I should get the same red flashing light. Yeah, and I see it's still doing the same thing. Red flashing light starts, stops. Make sure I try to boot it up while the flight's flashing. Oh, I saw the fan try to spin up real quick. So that's something. It's still not booting. Okay, I guess next, let me go ahead and disconnect the power. And all I'm gonna connect is the battery because Post said they're working on firmware to make it work with the battery disconnected. So let's just connect the battery. I'll plug it back in. Oh. You got the fan booted up. So I actually have it set, okay, there we go. So it looks like it is, in fact, not able to work without the battery connected. Nothing else connected, the display's disconnected, the camera's disconnected, everything else is disconnected, but it did boot with the battery connected. All right, let me just try one more thing. I don't recommend anybody try this at home ever, but with the system powered up, in the Windows desktop, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. Now, if it shuts down immediately, that means it's probably a hardware issue, meaning I don't think a firmware update can fix it, but if it stays on, it's 50-50 hardware firmware, but I'll go with a firmware issue. So here we go. Okay, well, that's a little piece of good news. I've disconnected the battery. The system did not shut down. So I'm gonna assume that it is in fact a firmware issue that keeps the board from functioning while it's disconnected, or at least keeps it from booting up. Let me try one thing. Let me see if I can do a system restart from here and if it'll restart or not, if it'll just get to the shutdown phase of the restart and not power back on. All right, so it, I mean, that's something. It looks like it does, in fact, the battery does need to be connected to boot the system. Once it's up and running, you can disconnect the battery, and as long as you leave it running and just do system restarts, it, it'll work, but that's not really what I need. So, that's pretty disappointing, and it 
really negates the second planned portion of this video where I was going to design and 3D print a very slim VESA mounted enclosure for this and mount it to a 4K monitor to build a simple all-in-one desktop. And I also had an idea kind of floating around up here to take the main board and combine it with the guts of a DAC like a Scarlet Solo and a 7-inch LCD touchscreen and build a self-contained audio capture device so I can just plug in my Sennheiser MKE 600 mic directly into it it'll have phantom power and I can run a super lightweight Linux WM so I can EQ tweak and capture the audio send it directly to my file server all ready to go just plug it in and sync it with my timeline but none of my ideas include the battery so Probably to many of y'all watching, this may not be a big deal. After all, there really isn't an upgrade path for the framework yet, so really not a reason to repurpose your main board. And, and I get that, but for me and for many tinkerers, builders, and modders out there that framework knew that they were selling this to, it feels very disingenuous. It's about the principle of investing in a product you were told had a specific capability only to find that that capability doesn't exist. Apple users know what I'm talking about. That's not a biased swing at Apple. I mean, just last year, Apple was fined like $12 million for lying about the water resistance level of an iPhone. I, a few years before that, I remember something about their 4G iPads not actually being 4G capable in Europe and Australia, I think. I mean, they had to give out a lot of refunds. I mean, maybe I'm just more disappointed because I both placed a little too much trust in the company because of what they represent and what they're trying to accomplish, and because the content I've made about the framework has driven thousands of people to their site. Now, I don't have a sponsorship or even an affiliate relationship with framework, but I feel like I personally misled people because just like Linus and Dave2D and others, I just took the CEO's word that it worked without testing it until now. And my job is to not take any word's word on anything and to test the claims. I mean, trust but verify. And although my content has been favorable, I'm not an arm of Frameworks marketing department. I, I'm an independent creator and I make content about things I'm personally excited about. And that's been the Framework laptop since I got it back in August. But now some of that excitement's been squashed by this. But I, I don't know, what do you guys think? Is it a big deal? If you already bought a Framework laptop, does it matter that the main board can't function without the battery connected outside of the laptop? I mean. What if you were considering buying one? Does this info factor in on that decision? And I'm sure I'll hear from the very biased fanboys who have already given their blind devotion to a one-year-old company. I know, Framework can do no wrong, but they kinda did. Now, ultimately, how the company handles what I would consider a mistake says everything about that company. Now, again, there will be varying levels of shits given among the audience watching this, but regardless if the actual feature is important to you, most will admit that for a CEO and, well, the lead software engineer of a company to boast about a feature of their product the day before it goes on sale and then contradict that claim five months later without even an explanation, a timeline for correction, just an, oh, by the way, we're working on an update that will make that feature that we said worked actually work. I mean, it's just bad form. I mean, anyway, I'm sorry this video turned into a rant. Ultimately, I guess I'm disappointed because I planned on sharing some of what I thought was pretty cool and practical ideas for repurposing this motherboard, but honestly, I'm not going to put the time, effort, and, well, printer filament into a project that ultimately may never actually work. But I guess now I got a few days free. Again, I look forward to your opinions, but don't kill the messenger. I'm, I was just doing my job. I really wanted it to work. There is a link to the thread I mentioned on the framework forums in the description below. 
I did post a request for more info so you can track any response I may get there. Uh, before you go, be sure to hit that like. It does help get this content out to people with similar interests. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.